Chadji Gaddafi repping that true ever, forever, respectfully. Tune in, stay tuned. We with that Gully TV. Everything Gully, everything ooh-ah. 2-5, Queen's Finest. Way before dudes was even thinking about being independent, we was doing it. This is in, you know, the mid-80s. Late-80s, yeah. yeah, we was doing that. Oh, before you was even, like, a part of the Juice Crew, you was already yeah, pressed Yeah, before that. Yeah, we had, a, we had a joint called Go Queensbridge that we actually pressed up and put out ourselves. Yeah, that's a fact. Getting back to the uh, the documentary that, uh, that I love so much. What's the name of it? It's called... Um, Tragedy, the story of Queens. How long? How long? How long did it take to uh, put that together? Man, that was a process because it started. I was free. I was out in the world. Then I got incarcerated, and we took some. We we, we filmed during that process, and um, it was probably like a year, a year, uh, all all together, probably like a year. It wasn't a rush job. Definitely wasn't a rush job. How you uh? How you feel about the social media hustle? You know what I'm saying? Like nowadays, a lot of people, you got people who are, who don't even put out music. They're musicians, but they don't put out music, but they popping like a motherfucker on social Listen, media. Listen, bottom line is, man, look, I'm gonna tell you like this. There was a time when I really didn't understand it, right? Now that I understand it, I definitely gained a, a, a respect for it. And listen, man, at the end of the day, we out here, when I say we, you know the we as in us that I'm talking about. We out here, there's not, listen, ain't nobody else on the opposite side of the spectrum going to exalt us in any way unless they got 95% of us under their fangs. Right. We between the lines, you know what I'm talking about. If not, then, you know, this food ain't meant for you. So... I came to respect the social media game when I saw how when I saw how people could make their own lane and build their own hustle and build their own income. I came to respect it. I gotta respect it. That's how I feel about it. Right. We gotta eat out here, man. And these people, you know, they're not gonna give us nothing, man. That's evident. So we gotta take what we can get. What steps you taking, you know, to participate in this 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 whole I mean, online race because that's what it is man. yeah yeah uh I, at the same time i don't try to like keep up with everybody in it what i do is i try to learn from like the people i respect that's actually doing quality work people like yourself um and i try to like build my whole approach from what i gather from that i'm not trying to compete with certain kind of lanes because I see it's just about pillaging and exploiting all the time. Uh, and I'm not with that. So the people I the people I gain like an education from and uh get guidance from, you know, they're doing it successfully, they're making money off it. Right. And they're you know, they're constantly building their land, building their building their brands and solidifying their legacy. So I'm respecting that all the way and learning day by day. Like I said, man. I come from a different era, so, you know, it's an adjustment for me. If you could pick a uh, <laughs> MC, uh, dead or alive, to do to, to do a song with, who would it be? One? One. Right now? I would have to say right now, I want to, uh, I want to, I want to do a song with Jay Electronica. Word? Yeah. That sound hot. Yeah, I do. I want to do a song with Jalen Trump. Why you, why you say him? Uh, he's, he's fucking dope. He's ill. He's dope. Conscious. It's not even so much just conscious. Like, I love where he comes from with it. I love it. He seems like, like he don't give a fuck. He don't. Without saying it. Like, he's like, I don't give a fuck, but he doesn't have to say it. You know what I'm saying? I like that about him. And he's nice. And his style is simple. You know, it's simplistic, but it's ill. I love, like, he's like one of my favorites, man. 
did you uh did you did you come to Prodigy's did you have Prodigy's funeral? No. Why you ain't come? Um I guess one of the main reasons is I don't do funerals, bro. I didn't go to my own grandmother's funeral. And if anybody knows my history, I made a, a song called Grand Groove about my grandmother. I don't do funerals. Uh there's there's a there's dudes that were hood icons coming from my neighborhood where I actually paid part of their funerals. Right. Yammy. Yammy, uh, I paid half of Yammy's funeral expenses. And I didn't even go to his wake or his funeral. And he was one of my closest friends. So me not going to Prodigy's uh, funeral is an indication of nothing. I think with a greater indication of my forgiveness and maturity is my hugging prodigy on stage at B.B. King's after he slandered me in his book. What exactly did he say about you in, in, in the book? He basically uh, made it, made it, uh, uh, he left it open for interpretation by insinuating that I had something to do with another man's suicide. Which is absurd, it's crazy. Okay. How do I have a hand in, in, in anyone's suicide? That don't make sense. It doesn't make any sense. But I guess for, for whatever reason, you know, he felt he could do that. Did y'all ever get to, uh, to kick it about that? Well, to be honest, I, I tried to approach him on it. And he constantly, how you doing? Have a great night, beloved. Thank you. I will. <laughs> I tried to approach him on it several times. He avoided me. I'm gonna be honest. He avoided me, and uh, he had a he had a brother doing security for him named Tyson. And Tyson like kind of like opened the lane for him, for for me and him to meet eye to eye, which was at BB King's. They had a performance there. Him and Havoc where, you know, you can see through the media, I hugged him on stage. Well, people, I hugged him, but people don't know. I, I whispered in his ear and was like, listen, you know, you was wrong. That shit was fucked up, you violated, but I'm gonna give you a chance to make it right. He hugged me back and basically, you know, agreed to make it right. Or I, I, or should I say obligated himself to try to make it right. In what, as in what aspect, if you, if you don't mind me asking? I won't speak on that. You know, that'll stay between me and him. But um, he definitely made, he definitely, you know, accepted it. I put it out there, I did hug him, I did embrace him. Because at the end of the day, you know, when you do fuck, when you do, do sideways things, man. You gotta live with it, man. But I'm not gonna hold that in me. I ain't gonna lie. At first, I felt a lot different about it, but I'm glad I was able to forgive him. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that's for nobody else. I don't care about what anybody else thinks, what anybody else has to say. I don't care about that. I don't live for nobody else. In a prior, in a prior conversation, you told me um, that you served you served some time with Black Rob of State, right? Yeah, my first bit I was with Black Rob, like 16. We was in Elmira together. Y'all was both young young like that? Yeah. He's a little, I think he was a little older than me, but not too much. He was a rapper back then? You was rhyming back then too? Of course, yeah. Because when I went to El Mar, I was 16. I was rapping since I was like 11. Okay. W was Rob, Rob was rapping up there too? Of course, yeah. He was putting it down. Was he nice? Yeah, he was nice. Y'all used to trade bars and shit like that? Yeah, we, we, yeah, yeah. We did the ping pong thing in the yard and all that, back and forth, yeah. definitely. No doubt. So, uh, when when y'all came to the world and you became who you became, who you in eventually became, and he became who he was, you was it shocking at all? Not really. I wasn't shocked. What it what it was though, like when we both came to the world. I think um, I had did a song called Game Tight. It's on the Intelligent Hulum album. When I did that song, he was like, "Yo, he bit my song." Ah. Uh. Cause it was called Game Tight, but at the time when I met him up north, he was using that a lot. But that was like, you know, 
somebody saying uh, 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 facts. Right. So he's like, yo, he put it out there like, yo, he bit my song. So I'm like, yo, I ain't biting nothing from you. Like, so we had a little issue with that or whatever. But it was funny because my people was actually in his circle and, and with him. And like, they kind of got us together. We talked about it. We got passion, though. So that came to the world. Yeah, yeah. This the first time you spoke of this on on, on uh, any anybody's platform? I believe so. What's uh what's your uh you know reception like when y'all see each other these days? What's the last oh, it's time all you love, man. I was I was fresh last round, man. It's all love, man. I don't have no animosity towards him, no. It's all love, man. I know he going through his changes and whatever his struggles. I wish him the best. You know what I mean. Sherm the Worm, that's a, uh, a reputable name to, to come out of your name. Well, you grew up with Sherm? <coughs> I can't say I grew up with Sherm. I, I can say I, Sherm kind of grew up. Sherm is younger than me, man. Oh, he's younger than you? Yeah, man. I, I, I love Sherm, man. I love Sherm, man. Sherm is family, man. He's like my little brother. Man. It was uh, made known to me that maybe he felt some... Maybe Sherm had some say so on what happened to Prodigy's mule. Really? I mean, I can't, I can't necessarily speak on who did it or who pushed the button. But um, what I can say is, it's funny because I was actually right where we, you and I, are at right now, and I heard about them uh, taking down the mural the first time initially, and I was gonna go over there and film. And talk about why would they do that? And mind you, this is someone who Prodigy wrote about in a book slandering my name. But even with that slander, it's certain things like I wouldn't do because I have honor. And um, on the way there, I, I got a call from somebody. I ain't gonna say who. I got a call from someone, and I told them where I was, where I was going, and they kind of, in a roundabout way, let me know why that happened. By the time I got to the mural, my decision was changed. Not because of the influence and or so-called power the person I was talking to may have out in the world with other people, but because, because of the principle, principles and morality, morality of it that they spoke on. That was deep. And, and it came down to this. Um, Basically, it came down to, like, why would we let his face exist on the wall as a representation of Queensbridge when he's not Queensbridge? Now, I know to the fans that sounds harsh, but they'll say, yo, Prodigy rep quick, because all they know is the musical representation of Queensbridge per... Prodigy's perspective, so and, I, and I and I understand that. Hold on, let me let me get to it. And I understand that, and I'm not taking nothing away from that. But you know, the conversation I had with an individual, you know, based on what Queensbridge is, right? I had to re I had to I had to understand where they was coming from, and even still, I wouldn't necessarily agree with it. I wouldn't do that. And 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 in the end, it was like, yo, trash. If you were up on that wall, nobody would touch it. Right. That's why nobody touched now. Nah. So, 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 so was was the basically the complexion of things was maybe there was other people that was more deserving of a mural in Queensbridge that was deceased besides Prodigy. Maybe that in part, but also too it, within that is that you know. He wasn't necessarily the representation of Queensbridge to be on the wall and be the face of Queensbridge, even within his passion, respectfully. And I know that's a sensitive subject and topic, and I'm not trying to cause any disrespect towards his family or his greatest fans, but people need to understand, you know, what it is to Queensbridge. I'm trying to understand what you're saying, like a motherfucker, but he put in a lot of motherfucking, the identity, like, he it seemed like. He made dope records, but you gotta understand, 
Nah, I've established what? Queensbridge before him. Huh? I established Queensbridge before him. Uh, she ain't established Queensbridge before him. He came at a time where you were coming up. So that's the era you embraced. Got you. Got you. And so therefore, you're going to look at that in a certain way and feel a certain offense. And I understand because you don't come from the Queensbridge I come from. And right. neither does he. Right. So you can never understand it, and I can never really explain it to you in a way that you would accept it. Got it. And for that, I apologize. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm going on. Not to be too technical, but uh, let's, get to, let's get to the who I. I respect that. Let's get to the who's guy. Nah, because this is all official. Okay. Yeah, anytime I, I fucks with you, I'm going to keep it official. You know what I'm saying? But um, my top five, the first one is Nas. Just to keep it green. No doubt. The sun is the nicest. You know what I'm saying? Nas. The second. You know what I'm saying? I gotta go with. I gotta go with nature. Word. The third. You know what I mean? I gotta go with. Havoc. I gotta go with Havoc on the third. The fourth. I gotta go with. Oh, that's hard too. Cause another one just popped up alongside that. On the fourth. So my fourth would have to be Craig G. You know what I'm saying? And my fifth would have to be my fifth. My fifth gotta be Capone. Uh, I would take uh, I personally I would take you over Havoc. He's dope, though. He's no, I didn't put myself in it. Look, yeah, yeah, wait, yeah, hold on, hold on. Wait. Put yourself in it. Now, nah, listen, hold on. When you ask me my top five, oh. that's me as a listener. Oh, okay. That's Got not you. me Got as you. an MC. Okay. I can only answer that as a fucking listener. Uh -huh. <laughs> if you want me to answer it as an MC, I'm going to fucking say me for one, me for two, me for three, <laughs> me for four, and me for five. But I'm answering it as a listener and as, you know, respectfully as a, as a, as a, as a hip-hop fan. Okay. As of late, um, I don't know, recent years, the Queensbridge, I don't know, sound, brand, it was a time when Queensbridge music was a brand. You dig what I'm saying? Even if, you know, the artists weren't associated, it was, it was Screwball, Bravehearts, CNN, Mob Deep, Esco. It, it, it was just a whole plethora. ACDC, yeah. Balls and Hooks, Killer, uh, Killer Shot, yeah, Killer Kids, yeah, yeah. It was just, it was, it was so much. Crime like, Fam. Yeah. What happened to the, uh, you know, the, the action over there? Well, bottom line is this, man. Times change. You know what I'm saying? Times change, and you know the the. The energy and the music changes, man. It's a new wave now, you know what I'm saying? Dudes get older, you know what I'm saying? Dudes get mature, you know, and, and now it, it basically became a whole new lane of Queensbridge where you got your Kink Shooters, your, um, your Piff Joneses, you know what I'm saying? You got uh, the Chef Lies. Right. You got different lanes in QB now. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a younger generation that's representing a different voice of hip hop. I like your response. I like your response. I mean it's true, like, you know what I mean? Right. It just like it just like went away and shit. Guess that was like a, 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 a time capsule. I mean, listen, to, to like, first of all, as far as like, anytime I'm on your forum, I'm going to keep it green because I respect your forum. So, like, for me, do I listen to all the new wave MCs from Queensbridge? Yes, I do. I at least give them a listen. Because for me, I, I'm about that legacy. I, I always rep that legacy. Like, I really went all for that legacy. And I know a lot of people in this time, they don't necessarily respect that because, and I can't expect them to because they don't understand that. Right. We're from a different time. Music is produced by the, li by the life of the time. Music is produced 
by the era, right. by a specific period. And there's things that go on within a certain time, within a certain era and or period that contributes to the artistry. So I say that to say, when you're an artist of my stature, you come from the crack era, right. you're going to produce a certain kind of art, a distinct art Word. that may not necessarily be uh, relatable in this time. There's a lot of things of this time that I can't relate to, but I can always respect the art form. Of. And that's where I come from, and that's off the no bullshit DVD. Like, I'm gonna keep it green, I don't got a front for nobody, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's how I feel. I give it a chance too now because I gotta look at it like, yo, this is what the youth wanna hear. Now, when I go in to make music, do I necessarily try to cater to today's youth? No, I don't necessarily do. I don't move like them. I don't dress like them. Right. And I don't think like them. Currently, currently, do you got a relationship with any of the artists that was on the Queens Bridge Finest album? Oh yeah, I do. Um, I got a good relationship with many of them. I mean, bottom line is like, you don't necessarily speak to your some. I know dudes that don't speak to their moms every day. Right. However, my mom's alive. I would I would speak to her every day. You know what I'm saying? But I know dudes that don't speak to their own siblings every day, like, but regardless of who or what, it's, it's, we still family, you know what I'm saying? Right. So long as it ain't no, long as it ain't no, um, long as it ain't no kill me dead function, the relationships is good, you know what I'm saying? That's how I look at it. Do you do music with any of them? Would I? Do you? I mean, yeah, I mean. I did. I just recently did a joint with uh, with, uh Nature. Did some joints with Nature. Did joints with Poem. Um, half. Got beats from Half. Got a partner. It's, it's a little live in the background. You know what I'm saying? You know, Gully TV always pull up at the live spots. It's a little live in the background. But um, I did joints with you know, half, like I said, Half. Recently, um, Nature. Uh, Poem. I can't, uh, I can't say I did joints with Nas. He's a little, you know, we got the layers around. We getting a lot of bread. But I know the respect is there because we got mutual people that we, you know, we stay connected. You said it's, so. it's layers around there? Yeah, hell yeah. As it should be. Oh, oh before you get to, before you reach him? As it should be. Several, several layers? Uh, multiple layers. <laughs> As it should be. <laughs> Maybe, um... Maybe if the good brother, man, maybe if the good brother Nipsey had no type of layers, he might still be breathing, man. Yeah. You gotta keep layers around you. You can't make it easy for these dudes. So I respect Nas. He's a bridge boy, man. Bridge boys, we get money and we survivors. We come from a different club. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we all come from the streets and shit like that. What, uh, what was your, uh, you know, what was your thoughts on, you know, the actual murder of Nipsey Hussle? Because it was broadcasted on social media and shit. Yeah, yeah. My, my initial thoughts. Before I had a thought, I had a feeling, and that feeling was pain. Um, it's ill because I didn't. I met him before. Years ago, and I liked him when I met him. Right. I saw something in him when I met him, but my first, I can't say I, it was a, my, my initial, after hearing his death, I can't say it was a thought at first. It was more a feeling, and I felt, I ain't gonna lie, I felt saddened, man. I was saddened, man. It hurt me, man. Because I, I could see that, like, once I met him, I liked him, and then, like, watching his, his process and watching in his motion, I can see he was a good kid. He was a good young man, yo. Yeah. He was one of the good ones, man. Let's talk music. What uh, when can we expect a project from you, solo joint? Um, I got a pro I got a solo project coming actually. Uh, next month actually, I got a solo project coming. Yeah, yeah, I got a solo project coming called Invisible Renaissance, and um. I just came, I'm just coming off a project, a joint project with Vinnie Paz from Jedi Mind Tricks. We did a, we did a collab on album together called Camouflage Regime. We got a lot of good feedback, a lot of great response. 
and uh, energy from out from the fans out there. And um, now I'm, I'm I'm gearing up to drop my solo project, Invisible Renaissance. It's done. It's 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 done. But see, the thing with me is like. I don't like to just wrap up an album, man. I like to, I like to, I like to get all the way to the dead end before I wrap it up. Right. Cause without, in my experience, you make some of the best songs much later in the game. Word. You know what I'm saying? Talk to me, I'll talk back, man. You look tired. I you. Nah, 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 nah. No, nah, yo, nah. you Gully TV. No, get it. <laughs> I know you want more. Get nah. it now. Nah, I'm letting you blow, man. I'm, I'm I'm glad that I finally got a chance to get you in the flesh. That um, the Instagram video it, it went viral, of course. That's because people hadn't seen you, but in a while, yeah. Yeah, I, I wanted to actually get you in the flesh. So, yeah. Nah, and I, and I gotta say this, I thank you because, like, when you reached out to me, it's like all my peoples was like, yo, honestly, I'm gonna keep it real. All my peoples was like, my son Gio, my son. Uh, I saw Scud's face, all of them was like, yo, you need to do Gully TV. They was already telling me. And you had reached out to me, and it's like, the way you reached out to me, I respected it. Because I could tell you knew my history, you knew my legacy, you knew my bills. So it wasn't just like some random, you know, blog, podcast dude trying to reach out to me and trying to exploit or pillage right. my, my, my brand. So I respected it. Yeah. And then, like, and, and watching you, and we, you know, we got some things in common. And one of the things we have in common is actually, rest in peace, the artist who both of us kind of wanted to help because we, I can tell we both like the underdog to win because we've been through the struggle is superb. And no through doubt. that, we got an ill ball. So even though Pearl might not have been perfect, right. and none of us perfect, he did his shit. But even through him, like, we kind of got a different connection. You know what I'm saying? Real recognized, real. Yeah, all the time. 20 yeah. blocks away. On that, uh, that, that, up, that upcoming project, you, you got any features? Yo, honestly, man, that's my team right there. Honestly, on this upcoming project, I got maybe maybe two or three like maybe two or three like real golden type features. Other than that, it's more or less just me and new action. Right. You know what I'm saying? What the fuck are you yawning like uh, that? Are you yawning? Are you bored, nigga? Nah, man. What the you, fuck? Uh, <laughs> you gonna have me editing this shit all crazy? Nah, hey, uh, don't edit this shit, nigga. Keep it green, nigga. Oh, uh, Come at me, nigga. What's up? I see, I see, I seen online uh, several different blogs and shit. You and, you and Ghostface, y'all related? Yeah, that's family right there. Um, he just dropped the album called "Hidden or Lost Files" or some shit like that. I'm on it. I'm probably like one of the only, only ones on the joint that got three verses and Ghost is only on the hook, and that's um NWO song, which is on the uh, the Bronze Nazareth produced joint. Um, that's definitely family. I love Ghost. Aside from Ghost being a remarkable artist, Ghost is actually a very, very unique human being. I love the brother, man. Right. I love that brother. Like, seriously, like, he's one of the good ones, man. He's one of the real sincere ones. I respect that about him. Salute the Ghost, man. The Wu, the Wu, um, the Wu Doc just dropped, the, the, the joint just dropped with Showtime. The, um, Mike's of Men. Yeah, that shit just dropped. So that's a good thing. They on the tour. The Gods of Rap tour in Europe. Shit is good, going good for everybody in there, man. I, I wish them the best. Everything good. When the last time you did a, uh, a tour situation? A what? When the last time you did a tour situation? Oh, man. The last time I did a tour situation was the early 90s, man. It's no mystery to everybody that, you know, the only way I can spit like this is to live it. So, you know, when you live this type of, or when you live this type of life, you got one foot in and one foot out, it's repercussion. So, unfortunately, I went through a lot of things with the um, so-called legal system, which prevented me from traveling. But now, I'm in a position where I can travel. So, we're going to see what unfolds with that, though. But I ain't jumping out unless the bag is absolutely... Absolutely right. Cause I'm getting enough just being around sitting here making my motion on the ground. It has accelerated the way music is distribu distributed. And uh, it's not like, you know, back in the day 
uh, we might listen to somebody's album for like 90 days, six months. It ain't like that no more. Um, you'll get a, a, a record and you, you feel that it's dope, but it's so much music available now. It's so many artists available now that you might be on some other shit by the end of the end of the week and shit like that. Like, what, what you think about that? Um, I think I think kind of what you ask me is like, uh, how do we how do we deal with the with the pace? How do we deal with the with the rapid with the rapid movement of today's pace within the music industry within within entertainment? Um, like you said, just to touch on it a little more deeply, before you had to work a record in stages, whereas you run to make show. If it got spins, you watched it gradually climb, climb to you know rotation, getting prime time, and then that kind of propelled a certain kind of buzz, which got people to go, you know look at the album. Now it's different. You know the, the playing field is not leveled. It's, the playing field's on another level now because you know. Whereas we had to depend on certain mix show DJs, we don't have to anymore. You know, you can have a dude who basically comes out of nowhere, create some type of buzz virally, and grabs the market for a time. But like you said later in the question, that time is shortened. So, you know, um, you got to move fast. And now I'm learning as a... Um, as a, I, I, I would say a, a marquee artist, now I'm learning how to move at the speed of a moment, and that's important. Like that's why I try not to miss moments. That's why when you hit me earlier, I was like, "Nigga, we gotta get up, because we gotta move at the speed of a moment." And life is short. We don't know when we are gonna see each other again. So let's get that working now. <laughs> and make it happen. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, right. We about to get it in. You ready? Huh? You ready? We about to get it in. Let's, Let's go. Who shot that? <laughs> who shot that documentary? That Queensbridge documentary. The one on me? Yeah. Um, this faggot ass nigga shot the documentary. His name is um. His name is uh. Uh. Fuck this nigga name. <laughs> I can't remember this nigga name now, man. Was you actually in jail? Yeah. How did he get the access to this? Listen, during the beginning of it, I was out. And then during the process, I got incarcerated. And he was able to come see me or whatever. But I, I, I had some strings. I pulled some strings. I know some people. But, um... He's a he's a he's a fucking lizard, man. Like he did some real crab shit because he ran to Canada and basically stole the rights of it, right. which was kind of like at the time my fault. And you gotta remember, this is at a time when dudes was thinking about doing documentaries. That shit happened over to a lot of us. A lot of us wasn't aware of um, streaming and shit like that. To, to and you know, sometimes these 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 lizards. They come and they and they you know they come and they they just really prey on certain things. He's a coward though, like, but it's all good because now I'm in a position where I'm actually gonna have a full production behind it. Right. So what he basically did was help me put a trailer together. Man, dope back trailer. I like that joint. I like that. Joint. Now I love it because it's my story. But now I'm in a position where for my story to be told more vividly with a bigger production behind it. So really, the little the little crumbs he got. Like, cause he did some shit where he got a deal for distribution in Paris and a whole bunch of sucker motion. So he basically shot a banging trailer for me. So now I'm gonna do it for real. Like, that was him narrating it? Nah, that wasn't him narrating. Who was doing the narration? Um, that was that was someone he employed to hide, like, they call it in film, like when you do docs or biops, that's the voice of God. That, but it wasn't him though. Damn, that shit was crazy. Yeah, it was raw. I mean, listen, my story's raw, man. Like, I got a real story, you know what I'm saying? So when, when it comes down to it, and long as it has the right, right production behind it, now it's gonna be even. Look, you are gonna have more reenactments, more. But you had you, you had them shots when you was in jail in that joint. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's 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 cool. But when you got a production behind it, listen, let me tell you something, man. P 
people like us respect those type of same shots. But it was raw. This is the world. The world wants production behind it. That makes it truth to them. When they got quality and they got production and, and the lights and everything is gracious. I know it now. Now I understand the game. So I'm like, and at first I was tight. So I'm like, yo, this thing is wrong with And then ran in Canada. But you know, with, with, with the legalities is different. Right. On some sucking shit, like, and, and it's funny because he tried to call me one day, like, yo, I'm sorry. And I'm like, I just wanted to wish you a happy new year. And I'm like, yo, nigga, come over here and see me and let's sit down and we can wish each other a real good happy new year. You know what I'm saying? But you know, everything's everything. I'm not mad, man. Like, like I said, he just helped me do a dope trailer, man. I use that as as, as a trailer right now. And I don't want to speak too much because I'm still in, 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 in um we still we still in negotiations with the um with the intelligent hold them documentary because you know the anniversary coming up. But all he did was like help me get a better situation. Clear up something um, for me about your name while you're here and shit. Uh, the last time that I spoke to you, you said something along the lines that. Intelligent Hookman was never really your name. Dean. Because the reason why it was never my name, because you're an intelligent hookman. No doubt. Anybody who come from the bottom, who's counted out, who's labeled as, you know, labeled as one not to win, unable to succeed, and has taught themselves whatever they've become the master. Nobody taught you how to no, you ain't go to college to learn the cinematography yeah. shit. You're you're what they call an autodidact. That's a self-taught person. No One of the first people to implement that type of education me was El Haas, the league El Haas. And in fact, I took a chapter out of his autobiography written by author Alex Haley, both of them rest in peace. He had a chapter in his book called Hullo. And I just put intelligence in front of it. So intelligent Hullo was a concept. Yeah, facts over the track, I make it hurt more. Furthermore, I might be the boss that your boss worked for. Reppin' Japanese denim, the gold zipper. Your bitch listed in my phone under the cum zipper. Swallowing Molly, now she watching me and her sister. Crime boss, kingpin nigga, the prime minister. Lil' nigga, I'm a M60, you still a Dillinger. Turned out, and I can't see why you still with her. This the adamantium dope that y'all can't touch, what? Mati, FT, Queens accordingly, sucker free, squeeze off semi to keep them off of me. Arm, leg, a leg, arm head, that's where I'll all be. Attract wealth to the same body that's most godly. Equality, peace, and more harmony. Word. <laughs> Word. <laughs> instant, re instant replay. Niggas gonna have to pull that shit back. That's vintage right there, my nigga. I appreciate that shit. I only did that for you. You know I'm be doing that for them. Yeah, y'all don't be wanting to do that. Why y'all feel that y'all can get up? Because, man, y'all don't be wanting to give up no bar. Why do y'all feel that y'all can exist without no, giving up no fresh don't be content? Saying, don't be saying. It's I'm fresh. Gonna Listen, I'm going to take your advice. Watch, I'm going to take your advice. I ain't going to speak on it. I'm going to just do it. And you're going to be like, oh, shit, you really took yeah, my advice. Man, gotta, I don't listen to bullshit. Keep us current, my nigga. Keep us current. I'm with Straight you. up. Word.